All righty. It is now officially 12 o'clock. To all those folks who joined early, kudos to you guys, and we are grateful to have you here. Uh, we're going to give it about a minute and a half to let everybody else uh, trickle on in, and then I will go over some quick housekeeping and pass it over to Holger. So uh, I'll talk to you guys in about 90 seconds. Thanks for joining, and we are excited about today. All righty. Happy Wednesday, folks. Tyler Cox coming to you here with Holger Stoltz. Uh, we are about to kick off today's webinar. I'm going to go over a quick uh, few housekeeping items. Uh, I know that we have all been on plenty of webinars that the housekeeping items are pretty standard and we all know them. There is the Q&A chat. If you have any questions, put them in there. This is kind of open forum. Uh, Holger will be going over some PowerPoint presentations. But if the questions are relevant, we will absolutely be answering them during the time of uh, your question. If not, we will hold them till the end and let uh, Holger answer them at the end there. Outside of that, I'm going to pass it over to our technical man, Holger Stoltz, and let him kick it off. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we are extremely excited for this brand new product launch. Take it away, Holger. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you, Tyler. And uh, welcome uh, as well from my side. Um, so if you have any questions, as Tyler said, put them in the Q&A session and we will try to address them during this webinar. And if we aren't able to address them during this webinar, absolutely, we'll follow up afterwards. Um, so I assume by now you all know uh, that we announced a new um, product last week, which is uh, VSP2, um, the speech privacy system. So um, what I will be talking about today is why speech privacy, what is speech privacy, and a little bit about what is a VSP2 um, to hopefully get all of your interest up in it and uh, get you to better understand what it does uh, and how it can help you and your customers in, uh, in situations they might experience. So why is speech privacy of, of interest? And uh, actually a lot of different areas and there's just a few things which, which are on this slide. Um, I, I think the biggest part simply is um, our work environment has changed. It has changed over the last um, 10 years and it definitely has changed over the last two years with uh, pandemic and uh, all of the discussions of how will the office look when we go back into the office. And open workspaces and open areas are definitely getting more and more important in the, in the new environment. And the question there, of course, is how do you actually, um, I don't want to say protect, but how do you ensure that a person who is working um, is not being um, interrupted or distract, distracted by um, conversations which are going on, other people working around, being on the phone, um, some sound coming in from whatever it is. Um, and how do you actually get these people to be um, less distracted and actually uh, concentrating on their work? And that is actually where, or one of the areas where speech privacy comes in, because it actually helps you um, to create an environment where it is easier to concentrate on your own thing and not getting distracted. Um, and that is not even meant as, as I'm trying to listen in on the conversation. It is really more of that unintentional listening. If there's a conversation going on, your brain starts to follow it at some point. Um, so there are so many things which, which simply lead you to, to be distracted. And then um, on the other side, there's, of course, uh, the security problem of um, information leakage, right? So um, your HR office, your CEO's office, your... CFO's office, a doctor's office, a lawyer's office. Um, how do you protect what is being said in there in today's environments where there are thin walls, um, which might not even be all the way up to the ceiling? How do you actually protect it from uh, leaking out? In that case, really information leakage into a hallway or into a, a neighboring office. So that is why speech privacy is important and why it actually gets more and more important in the market. Um, there have been solutions for that. So don't get me wrong. And the standard solution really is sound masking. Um, and what sound masking is, it generates some noise to protect against that unintentional uh, listening. Um, and it does that by creating 
um, a loud enough background noise, uh, typically using white noise or pink noise, um, to actually uh, create a noise level that is high enough so that a conversation which happens nearby is actually be covered by that noise. Um, but what that also does, it actually is an increase of the noise level in an office. So um, you are actually fighting noise with more noise. Um, that's how I, how I look at that. So you actually create more noise in an environment to ensure that people can't listen to the first part of the noise anymore. Um, and what that really does is an increased noise level does cause actually now again distraction and actually it does redu uh, cause reduction in performance. So the louder your environment, um, the less your, your performance. So creating more noise while it might help against the unintentional listening to a conversation, uh, your brain actually starts to be less performing less. So it actually has a, a, a negative impact. Um, it also sound masking solutions are typically installed and built out for large areas. So that is when somebody moves into a floor and says, before I build up walls, before I start with anything here, put up a sound masking system because that often goes above the ceiling tiles, is being wired at the point where the whole building is being wired. Um, so it really is like a large scale installation. It is not going into into a surgical problem, right? So I don't want sound masking everywhere. I want sound masking around this office. That doesn't really happen that often. Or I want um, the privacy in this area here for, for people who work there. Um, and that is actually where our product, the speech privacy product does come in um, versus uh, a sound masking pro product. Um, just a visual representation, actually, I, I explained that sound masking really is generating noise to cover up noise. Uh, if, you, if you look at it visual, it is exactly this over here. You have like the word hello written there. Um, and you just have to go, how dark do you have to go with that, with that second color on top from white to, to black until you can't uh, read the word anymore. And that's exactly what sound masking does, right? So it creates noise up to a point where you can't hear anymore in the, in the uh, representation of uh, visual representation, you can't read anymore um, the word behind it. Now, speech privacy, um, the technology which we are using is actually different. Um, instead of sound masking, uh, which is just cover with cover the sound of the conversation with more noise um, what we are doing is actually we are creating a complex sound uh, which is not white noise it's not pink noise um, it's actually a sound which reflects how human speech is being built up right so when i speak words um, that's actually a, a following of uh, what's called phonemes in the in the sounds and the right order of the phonemes when I'm talking um, actually makes up the words and that word then actually gives you the meaning. What we are actually doing is we take that idea of the phoneme, but instead of putting it in, in, the, in the right order where it would make, where it would create uh, words, we are actually taking these sounds, these phonemes and are just putting them together in a not word uh, forming way and therefore creating a sound which sounds like speech, but isn't speech. And now um, I know that one of my colleagues always says, you can only follow 1.6 conversations or something like that. Now think about it. We're just creating a second conversation, which isn't a conversation. And now you're actually unable to follow the first one because now you have two conversations of which one is not the real conversation. It's just our, our sounds, which we're gener generating. And that actually causes that people can no longer unintentionally follow a conversation that actually the, the information which is being disseminated is actually protected um, with that speech privacy. Um, we take that sound and just so that it doesn't just create uh, a bubble of voices, uh, we actually put some other sounds on top of it so that it actually creates a relaxing, I would say, environment. So it's not, uh, you don't have the feeling necessarily that you are sitting in the middle of, of several conversations going on when you listen to it. Um, you're sitting in an area which sounds relaxing from the overall sound. Um, and these, 
these uh, pseudo um, speech uh, or complex sounds are actually just part of the of these overall uh, acoustic uh, of that overall acoustic environment. Um, but what we actually achieve with all of that is that um, we can create the same um, masking results as a, as a sound masker, but we can do that at uh, a volume level, which is eight dB lower than a typical sound masking system. And uh, again, visual representation, if you think about, again, the word hello on the left side, um, and what we do in the middle, what you see there, is like these speech-like, these letter-like letter symbols we are just putting on top of it, and that actually already starts to make that uh, less readable. Uh, but without having to go to that full black, nobody can see anything anymore, right? So we don't have to go to the full volume in the audio uh, environment. Uh, in the visual representation, we don't have to put all black over it. Um, it becomes, uh, it starts to become uh, hard to read. And then if you put another sound on top of it, again, we don't need to go all black, uh, but the word hello, on the right side is hard to read already at this point, right? So that is really the visual representation of what speech privacy does versus uh, what um, sound masking does. Um, it is measurable. And this is a graph which uh, we have measured. We are now actually getting an independent lab to, to do, or actually an independent lab, I should say, has done the, the measurements as well. We have not seen their report yet. Um, but we'll publish that as soon as we have it. Um, they came to more or less exactly the same result which we are seeing here. And what this, what this graph shows you is um, in our measurement and in the specific environment where we did this measurement, um, on the left side, you see um, what percentage of words could be recognized by a listener, right? And 100% means somebody understood or couldn't understand a word of what was being said. Uh, but let's just assume that you want to achieve a result of, um, I only want 50% of the words to be recognized. And in the environment where, where this measurement was being done, if you follow the, pink, the, the um, orange curve, you will actually see that uh, with a conventional sound masking system, which the orange curve is, to get to that 50% value, you actually have to have about 55 dB of, of sound masking to actually measurable in that environment that only 50% of the words could be, uh, could be recognized. And now if you look at the purple curve, which is the average between the different sound um, systems or sound effects which we, which we provide as part of the speech privacy system, um, and you go to the 50% mark, 50% uh, of recognition, you actually will see that that is at about 46, 47 dB. We actually were able to show that it is 8 dB less. Um, and again, that was done in, um, in a lab, uh, in our lab, and we are actually getting an independent lab, or the report of an independent lab, which will show exactly, oh, which we already know has the same results. Um, they're just putting together their, their report on that. Um, but so the advantage of speech privacy over sound masking is measurable and can be clearly seen um, that it really makes the environment quieter by adding less of, of noise. The VSP2 actually comes in two parts. Um, one is the control unit, which actually um, generates a sound, has the amplifier inside, um, so drives the, the speaker, uh, how you mix the audio and things of that nature. Um, and then the VSP speakers itself, uh, which are available in black and white, um, and they come in a pair. Um, and one control unit can handle up to eight speakers. Um, as I said at the beginning, so the speech privacy system or our speech privacy system is more meant for the um, smaller problematic area, solving something where, where you want to go around some offices, around some conference rooms. It's not meant to go into a full floor where you might need hundreds of speakers. It is really meant to go into, into these smaller um, areas, smaller solutions. Um, so as I said, designed to be installed in small areas um, and also being designed to um, easy install a post build out. So not needing to be done 
at the time when cables are being, are being uh, pulled through the building and before the ceiling is in, uh, really being uh, able to put that in um, after uh, a build out. So what are the target spaces in the office? It is around smaller meeting rooms and offices. Um, it is uh, um, so actually to, to protect um, leakage of information from, from these areas. It is meant for open meeting areas to protect um, the person who is sitting there and working from maybe conversations which are going on, from phone calls which are going on, um, things of that nature. Uh, but then also between meeting rooms. Um, often, um, if you go into, into offices, it looks like there's a wall between two rooms. But if you really uh, look above the hung ceiling, you will find out that these walls are actually just going to the hung ceiling. They're not going up to the real ceiling. And actually, echo or audio is traveling over these walls and is traveling from one room to the other. And you can actually protect two rooms which don't have a full, a full um uh, a wall going up to the to the real ceiling um, with the speech privacy system and actually protect two conference rooms against each other. Um, so if you protect uh, an office or a meeting room from the outside, um, you can add the speakers outside on the wall uh, as high as possible and uh, up to, uh, they can be up to 12 and a half feet apart. And this way you can actually go whatever one side or several sides of a, of a meeting room on the ceiling uh, right uh, around the, the walls of that uh, meeting room. Um, if you have an open work area, um, you can install the speakers right under the ceiling or on the ceiling um, up to 16 feet apart in that case. And that actually, uh, again, creates uh, the speech privacy um, in that area. And what that means overall, if you look at uh, protecting outside rooms, uh, outside walls of a meeting room or uh, an office space, we can actually, with the eight speakers, protect up to 100 feet of the outside walls. Or if you look in an, uh, at an open work area, um, each speaker can do about 250 square feet. So we are actually looking at up to 2,000 square feet protection uh, with one uh, control unit and up to eight speakers. Um, from a, a setup perspective, it is really very, very easy to be done. Um, you have only a few selectors and the volume knobs to, to use here. Um, number one, um, you actually select the kind of environmental sound you like, um, and that really depends on what your preference is. Um, do you like more to get uh, uh, some kind of natural sound in there. And again, that is not, not like disturbing and you're suddenly sitting in the middle of a, of a forest or uh, swimming in a river, um, but it gives um, as a background noise, which actually just makes everything softer, not as harsh. Um, and then you actually uh, mix the balance uh, between that sound and uh, the um, speech-like sound, which I talked about earlier. Um, so you define what the mix is, and then you give it an overall volume. There's also an additional sound effect which you can put in, uh, guitar, piano, things of that nature. Um, that does not mean that you suddenly have Jim Hendrix uh, playing the guitar on it. Um, what this does, it really it just gives you suddenly a guitar sound or a piano sound. And not, again, not loud, disturbing, uh, but just as something like there's a clink, from a, from a piano coming. And what that again does, it's more um, psychologically for your brain. Um, it actually just gets your brain back if you still were trying to follow unintentionally a conversation or something like that. It just suddenly is something which is like completely different and actually brings your brain back to what you are doing and not just wandering away. And equalizer settings um, on the back simply are for uh, the way how you position the speakers in the room um, you equalize the uh, audio uh, signal accordingly so that it actually uh, uh, does the best, um, or gives you the best results for the speech privacy. The system, again, um, comes with everything to actually install it. And again, it's being meant as a post uh, with a wall mount. 
Um, if you want to put it on the wall mount, that's this plate, you put it on the wall with two screws, you get the cable, um, and then you actually twist the speaker onto that wall mount. Uh, or, or it also comes with a ceiling mount. And the idea here really is you don't have to drill into or cut into a ceiling tile. Um, it actually goes onto the T-bar, which is already holding your, your uh, ceiling tiles. And as this is a comparable small speaker, um, it actually looks very nice. If you put a white speaker under the white ceiling, uh, it really looks very nice and is not, not disturbing at all, uh, but is a very easy installation without having to, to cut into, into ceiling tiles or do anything of that nature. Um, so very easy to install, very easy to set up, um, and very easy to put into uh, an office after um, built out of that office. So now, regarding installations, Holger, I've got two questions for you. Go ahead. One is from Kevin Deck. Uh, if you install the speakers inside the meeting room, are there any implications for conferencing mics in the room? Is there potential yeah. for the sounds from the speakers Speaker. being picked up by video conference mics? Uh, a very good question, actually. One of the, one of the reasons why we aren't um, playing the sound to you right now. We would love to do that. <laughs> um, I, can, I can tell you there's two things which, is, which are keeping us from it. The first one is um, the noise reduction of Yamaha um, conference phones and, uh, and uh, echo cancellation noise reduction algorithms. Um, you actually can't record the sound with our microphones because they cut it out and say like, that is not something which I want to send to the far end. Now you can say, hey, why don't you use a different microphone then to record it and you could still play it. Yes, and we did that. Um, so we took a cheaper, not Yamaha microphone, uh, recorded the sound and tried to actually send it over Zoom or Teams. And in that case, Zoom or Teams um, algorithms to kick in and say like, oh, number one, I can actually compress that sound, which does sound, doesn't sound good anymore. And then they try to do a noise uh, reduction on it as well. So the short answer is um, with a good microphone like Yamaha, you will not hear that at all. And with uh, unified communication applications, if, there, if you have a bad microphone, the unified uh, communication applications is kicking in and also uh, trying to or uh, reducing or eliminating that sound uh, being transformed, transferred. Great. And one other one, and then I'm going to hold these other ones that are coming until the end. I'll let you finish. How is localized audio acquired by controller to scramble the complex audio pattern and then reintroduce it to the space or adjacent spaces? Is there some form of mic pickup? No, no. So there, that, that complex sound is not based on what is being said around you. That is actually um, a sound pattern which Yamaha has worked on for years, uh, seriously, um, to come up with that sound pattern. So it's not based exactly on what's being said around you. It is being based on, on language. Uh, or this technology cannot be used in all countries. It can be used in Western languages. It can be, it works for Japanese. Uh, I assume you would have to talk to our engineers or our, our language specialists who would tell you which languages it will not work with uh, because the phonemes would not represent what's being, what's being used in specific languages. Uh, but so it is, it is really a sound which has been um, created in the lab just based on language, but it's not being based on exactly what's being said next to you or in the room next door. So no Great. microphone. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right, I'll okay. let you finish but, off and then we have some questions. Okay, good. But these were already two very good questions. So very happy to hear that. That's good. Um, and actually it's it's not that much which I, which I want to talk about, uh, a few more slides which I have. Um, while I'm saying that this is a new product for the US market, um, the technology actually has been available in the US before, but the product has been sold as is in Japan for, I think, a few years now. And we do have a few um, samples um, where they actually have used the product or where the product is being used. This is a, a shared office example um, where they have like uh, open booths uh, where you can uh, rent it for a day. Um, and what they have done, as you actually can see, 
Uh, they installed the speakers under these beams uh, pointing down um, between these open areas. And this way actually creating the speech privacy uh, between the different booths and ensuring that whatever happens in one booth does not travel or is not being understood in the, in the next booth over. Um, so that is for shared office. Um, this is actually an example again uh, from Japan for a language school um, where you have a teacher and a student sitting in one of these booths and doing uh, language uh, tests and speaking uh, specific languages. Um, and they installed the system uh, in that case actually on top of the walls um, to protect what is being said in one booth or what, protect one booth from what's being said in the, in the next booth so that uh, students are not being distracted by, by the lesson going on um, on the other side of the wall. Um, and that is really, uh, again, two of the installations. There are several others as well, uh, which we have images from um, in Japan. Um, and again, um, so the product is working, is already in use um, and, and has been in use for, for years. Um, it's just new to the US market. Um, and that's really it. It is a, a quite an efficient privacy product, which, which provides you the privacy, which provides you the um, uh, ensuring uh, that information doesn't leak, that people don't unintentionally start to listen, that they don't get uh, distracted. Uh, and in a, in a package, which is really very easy to install um, into offices um, after the full, out, full build out, um, to actually really do these, these smaller areas, protect smaller areas or protect uh, single offices. And with that, Tyler, any additional questions which we have? All righty. So I will kick this off first. Um, guys, I'm going to put my email address in the chat box. Um, uh, Holger is in the middle of nowhere, Vermont. So if his internet cut out on you during any of the presentation or answers to these questions, email me and I will get you those answers if you missed any. So, oh, and I, I apologize. I saw that at some point my uh, internet <laughs> said you have a bad connection. That's all right, but we have some great questions, so I'm excited. So, um, uh, question here: Do we humans perceive this masking um, physiologically, cranial pressure differentials, orally once one steps into the protected area? Wow. Uh... And we're a lot of a lot of uh, work. So the the way how I see it, and I'm not I'm not a psychologist or a speech language expert who can give you the, the full answer to that. But the way I see it, the way I hear it, and I have a system in my in my office actually installed, is it really sounds like a conversation, but you don't put it on the same volume level. You don't have to put it on the same volume level as, as a normal conversation. So um, it is just like there is something going on, but it's not like I'm following it and there's nothing that I can follow because it isn't works. Um, I can tell you that she looks around and says, like, who is speaking? Um, even though it, it, it's just these sounds. Um, and the whole idea really is that it just creates the feeling of a conversation to to overlap with real conversations going on and therefore really makes a real conversation hard to follow or impossible to follow. I hope that answers the question. I think it does in, in some sense. Um, uh, greetings to Holger from Tony from Naples. How does the VSP2 compare to the speech privacy component in the MRX7D? So uh, great question, Tony. Um, so the, the answer to that is that's why I just said the technology was available in the US. It is actually the same technology. So it is, um, we took what is available in the MRX 7D in a comparable expensive DSP and actually put it into a smaller size, um, uh, less expensive uh, package, which has uh, uh, amplifier included everything so that you actually can get the same technology, which is in the MRX 7D, but you buy the full DSP. But now in the DSP two, you get the, the smaller package um, and just that technology. And that technology with a smaller package brings me to another question. Uh, will you be able to talk price here, Holger? How does this compare to existing solutions? So um, I, I recommend everybody to uh, um, reseller go to your distribution channel uh, and customers go to your resellers. 
Um, I, I love to talk pricing, but I think that is, uh, that is uh, where, you, where you should uh, ask these, these guys. What I can say is uh, we, of course, have compared pricing. And we, of course, actually had discussions with uh, some of our resellers early on to see interest, to understand where's the market, what's going on. And the quick answer is that um, this product is priced very competitively. Uh, to actually allow for the solution. Again, the, we're not trying the full floor. If you go for a full floor, it is not, it's not your solution because it's only for 2,000 square foot and you would have to put up a lot of systems. But if you are happy with up to 100 feet or up to 2,000 square foot, um, and actually I think even if you put um, less expensive than other solutions. Less expensive isn't correct. Um, are the lines 7V or low Z and how far from control to the speaker? Uh, are they, okay. Um, that's a good question. And I thought I had the answer and somebody last night actually made me extremely nervous about my answer. And therefore I'm going to take the fifth on this and say, you know what, that is a question which we will answer back by, by email uh, just to make sure that I'm not saying something completely stupid here. Yes, Randy Rowe, I will get you that answer. Um, uh, <clears throat> I have a, a few other here, if these folks are still on. Randy has another one. Can they be networkable? Uh, no, so they're not networkable. They're a standalone solution. They're really meant as a solution around one specific area. So. Uh, not networkable. Uh, we do have uh, for for power control. There are ways to do that to either switch it on automatically in the morning and switch it off in the evening, um, or to go ahead and uh, just switch it on whenever you need. Uh, but they're not network networkable or controllable from uh, from uh, a distance. Gotcha. Um, somebody wrote here, I assume that if Zoom can cancel it out, other software can as well. I'll let you answer that. That is, that is correct, yes. Um, can firmware be updated in the future, i.e. different, better sound effects or masking, different languages, et cetera? Uh, so, no, the system, again, it's not, it's not networkable. It's not being meant as, as being upgradable in the field. Um, it is it is a closed system as is, um, and uh, again that that sound which we have has been developed over years and years and years. Um, there is no, I, I don't think that there is any expectation from us that uh, we will get uh, anything new um, for different languages. That would be different sounds on the system which you which you buy in the U.S. is being meant for Western languages. Um, if you need something in a different country, that would need to come from that country at that point. Okay. Uh, speaking of other countries, is this product coming to Europe? If yes, when? Uh, that is a question which should be asked to uh, uh, Yamaha in Europe. Uh, I'm not aware of it. I, I only know that we, we uh, got it here in the US because we thought that it is a great product for our market. All righty. Uh, Tony, also from Naples, is it possible to use the DCP-1V4S as remote control? Uh, so, no, um, there's no, again, there's no network, no connectivity to the outside. So you cannot use uh, any of uh, Yamaha's remote controllers to, to control the system. Yes, all righty. Do the sounds repeat or are they truly random? In other words, could this be used in a secure facility? Um, another good question. Um, I do believe that at some point the sounds do um, repeat in some way because if you if you would do pure random, uh, pure randomly, you could generate randomly words. Um, and uh, so that is, and, and, and the number of phonemes is actually uh, uh, not that big 
in, in any language. Um, so uh, as far as I know, it, it is, uh, the sounds is, is a loop which is happening, um, but which is a loop which is extremely long. Yeah, yes, extremely long indeed. Uh, if placed in a room, they protect from external noise. Does that also protect against internal leakage? So you you protect you protect the area which you want to protect by protect by putting speakers outside of that area. Uh, if you put the speakers inside of a room, that protects you against the sound from the outside. Uh, right. So the example of having back to back conference rooms and the wall might not be go up. Um, you put the speakers into each of these rooms. Um, to protect this against the sound from the neck from the room next door on, uh, on the other side of that wall, um, but not against. Uh, um, well, you, you you protect against that conversation. Yeah, let's leave it there. All righty. Um, and then somebody had asked if we could play a short sample of the sound. Unfortunately, as you had spoken yourself, that would be canceled out anyway. So. Guys, if you, I can't say the word demo because this is such a unique um, solution here <laughs> where it's very difficult to demo virtually, but reach out to us with any other questions or if you guys are looking for possibly um, purchasing and pricing, reach out to your distributors and your resellers um, and, and they could possibly get one in your hands. Anything else from you, Holger? No, I uh, hope that uh, helped understand uh, the technology, the difference to uh, sound masking, and uh, hope this got your interest up. Uh, one last question. Are we doing, do we have trials or demos that we'll be sending out? Um, so, yes, we, we will have. And for that case, I would say contact your regional sales manager. Um, uh, that is actually all of them uh, will be equipped with demo units uh, by themselves, as well as some demo units in our in our uh, portfolio, which we can send out because that is really the way to demonstrate it is in person uh, and getting it in, in your offices. Perfect. Well, I think I have I one last question. What language is the labeling on the transmitter in? Oh, in English. In English. Yes. Sorry, if, if there were still some image which might have shown uh, Japanese. Oh, I see it right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's here, right uh, here. It's this final yes. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So I, I, I apologize. No, it is in English. Um, that, that is, uh, you, you see, that's like uh, the, the Japanese... Uh, uh, the product was available in Japan first, and uh, I apologize, I did not exchange that image. All right, perfect. That I'll take fault for that. I should have checked that out last night. I guess my was a little late. But again, thank you, everybody, for staying late. Thank you, for everybody, for joining early. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining us on this new launch. Um, again, we are adapting to change, and uh, speech privacy is something that we believe will be helpful for many individuals. So thank you, Holger, for the great presentation. Appreciate everybody staying on. If you do have any other questions, reach out our way. If you're looking for demos or, or purchasing or learning more, reach out to your RSM or FSE on the Yamaha side, and we will be more than happy to continue a conversation. Everyone, I will give you back part of your day. Thank you very much for joining us and make it a great rest of the day. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Take care.